Hey, ¿qué pasa, amigos? You're listening to the Puro Pinche Cast and Blast podcast. I'm your host, Pinche Ben. Join me in entertaining guests as we share some wins, some fails, and a whole lot of laughs as we dare to admit embarrassing mistakes we've made learning how to fish and hunt. We're glad you're joining us, and no matter what your background or what your skill level, everyone is welcome here. What's up, what's up? I'm your host, Pinche Ben, and this is Season 1, Episode 2. And today, we have a guest with us, Jimmy Trent. Jimmy Trent, say what's up. Yo, what's up, Pinto family? That's what's up, that's what's up. Hey, check it out, man. Today, we're going to be talking about public land hunting etiquette. Man, I have some I have some stuff to be sharing with you guys through our guest. Uh, we're just going to bring you guys some awesome content. So, man, crack open a beer with us, get comfortable, and... Man, let's have some fun. I'm going to turn it over to my guest and let him introduce himself to you guys and just talk a little bit about his background. So here we go. Jimmy, let us know uh, a little bit about yourself, man, and uh, tell us your background. Yeah, so like like Ben said, name's Jimmy Trent. Um, recently retired from the Army, did 21 years there. So a veteran like Ben, uh, we actually worked together in the past, got some deployments together under our belt, things like that. So growing up, I... I grew up way out in the middle of nowhere, like out in the woods, you know, so uh, naturally there's nothing to do out there. When when your neighbor's, you know, probably two miles away, your closest neighbor's two miles away, you got nothing but you got your dogs, you got your woods, and you got your weapon of choice, which mine growing up was mainly a Daisy BB gun, lethal. So Lethal. <laughs> lethal. Yeah, so it's fun. Uh, yeah, so growing up out there just, just – I was one with the woods at the time, you know, growing up, and uh, I learned so much just being out there. I uh, grew up hunting fish with my dad. My dad took me out all the time. whole family was outdoorsmen, so I learned so much from them. Like I said, I came in the Army, kind of got away from it for a while, uh, about 10 years, got back into it, and uh, been hitting it real hot and heavy since then for the past 10, 15 years. So I'm currently doing a little bit of guiding work uh, for Unnamed Ranch at this time. That'll be coming to you soon, though, folks, and open to you all soon. So it's kind of my background. Um, looking forward to uh, getting out here with you guys, talking about some of these hot topics and things like that. And uh, hopefully we can all learn from each other and just open the doors to what, what we all experience. Right on. So I like to start this off with a few rapid questions, man. Break the ice, get you comfortable. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and throw these at you and see how they go, Jimmy. So here we go. Here we go. Rapid questions. Here we go. So uh, what's your favorite fish? My favorite fish is uh, a blue cat, trophy blue cat. Nice, nice. Okay, so uh, what's your favorite fishing method? Well, with being, uh, you know, liking catfish, I like the, the tried and true Carolina rigs. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, if you could pull up a fish out of the weirdest spot, where would you want to brag about? Weirdest <laughs> fish? Okay. Let's talk about, you know, old school Jeremy Wade, Wells catfish out of Chernobyl. Gotta be the coolest thing ever. Gotta be. <laughs> Chernobyl, man. Imagine what those uh, imagine what those fish look like, man. So that's pretty good. All right. So uh what's your favorite game to hunt? My favorite game is turkey hunt. I love turkey hunt. Think about the interaction, the talking back and forth, complete language, language to learn, language to speak, and the interaction between the two and the activity that wow. you gotta do. It's not just sitting, it's not always sitting. There's a lot of moving. Right, right, right. All right, so uh uh, what are you shooting these days? Like when you go hunt, man. So controversy topic here, right? Right. Uh, so, so, you know, it's always like a, a topic of discussion. Uh, what, what are you shooting? What's the caliber and what, what are you comfortable with? So I like to bow hunt. Whether bow. It's, okay. Whether it's turkey, deer, whatever the case is. Uh, I, I like to bow hunt. Now, if, if you asked me what is, if I had to give up anything, what would be the best caliber ever for me? I'm old school, so I'm going to go with the 30 out 6. To me, it's the most versatile thing uh, in, yes. you know, for anything in North America. So I'm going to have to go with uh, a 30 out 6. Nice. That's what I'm shooting too. So uh, I, you go with what you know, right? Yeah, so that's, that's good. You know. That's good. Um, if you could hunt anywhere, where would it be? Anywhere. what, Where and what or just where? Uh, if you could hunt anywhere... Um, or just where and what? I got to ask because it's a two part or two part answer for me. So red stag, red deer stag, that is like the the dream, right? Right, that right. That's the dream. But I don't want to get an offense. 
high fence red stag in okay. Texas. I'd like to go to Eastern Europe, you know, native. Let's go do it, man. Let's 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 get out there in nice. Romania, Bulgaria, whatever it is, and do some some actual red stag hunting. Wow. Okay. So that's a bucket list for me as well. What's up, amigos? It's Beach of Ben here, and I just want to take a little time to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, High Heat Outdoors. High Heat Outdoors was a company built out of necessity. After years of seeing nothing but oak patterns, pine, and maple style camel designs, the need for a South Texas camel pattern inspired High Heat Outdoors to focus on designs you've never seen before. Puro Mesquite. High Heat Outdoor products are intended for your time in the blind, brush, heat, or at the family barbecue. Fashion forward apparel and accurate concealment for Texas regions. Go check them out at www.pudomesquite.com. Hey, and if you want to save a little feria, enter promo code PINCHEBEN20, get 20% off your next purchase. Go check them out. Man, let's dive right in. So, uh, Jimmy, um, today's topic is uh, public land hunting etiquette. And we'll start there, and we're probably going to branch off a little bit. But um, let's talk about a little bit about public land hunting um, the difference between public land hunting and private hunting and, you know, uh, just the etiquette and what you can do, what you're not supposed to do, or maybe a, a controversial uh, discussion where, you know, some people may disagree, you know, and you guys can leave your comments or whatever um, and let us know, you know, as we as we go and, and we, we start talking about this stuff, let us know what you think. So I'm going to open it up to Jimmy. You start this off for us, man. Man, Ben, let me tell you, all right, you, you said it, we're diving in deep with something. So we're diving in deep to something that, you know, there's going to be a lot of opinions about. Uh, you know, everybody's got their, their own thoughts about that thing. So with that, I'd say you know, if, if, if you guys aren't sitting down, you don't have a cold one, you know, sit down and think with us, you might want to because it might get deep here. So <laughs> public, and, public land etiquette, is it real or is it not real? Well, like we said, it depends on the opinions, right? So here, here's personal opinions. And when, when we sit here and we talk, this is going to be my personal opinions, right? So right. I want everyone to know that these, these are my experiences, my opinions right. uh, on things that I, I, I feel. So public land etiquette. Um, as a public land hunter, uh, actually, let's back up. As, as growing up, I was a private land hunter for the majority of my life, right? So as I came into the Army, the, the land that I had... Uh, opportunity to hunt and things like that kind of went out the way so you're you know gone away far from home it's time to start public land hunting so it was a huge learning curve for me so growing up what I like to do is I like to be on the ground I'm a spot and stock type hunter and that's what I like to do so that's sometimes it's hard to do it in in public land because your typical public land hunter is going to put up a, a stand you know they're right. going to have a set yeah uh, a, a feeder you know things like that so I always ran into a lot of issues where I would walk into people's stands, their setup, and, and you know people were getting angry at me. But the thing is, my style was my style of hunting was different than their style. So does that make me a bad person? Does that make uh, is that bad etiquette? Right, so right. Could be, could be. And my personal opinion, I don't think it is. So there's different styles that lead into different different styles and methods of of hunting that lead into. The public land etiquette. So what was your different style? You know, you, you say, you know, um, they were sitting in a blind or they were doing that public land hunting. Uh, what, what, what was your way and your approach? So my approach is my approach is sometimes far different. So people say, hey, scout an area, do a setup on that area. And that's that's your area to hunt. Right. 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 So I do a lot of a, a lot of people will disagree with this. Uh, I do a lot of scouting while I'm hunting. I'm, I'm a ground hunter. So uh, use the resources available to you. And right. th this day and age, are to me, one of our most valuable resources is topo topographical maps via Google Earth, Onyx, whatever hunting right, app, right. whatever you want to use. So it's super, super valuable for us. So I do a lot of s cyber scouting, essentially, is what it is. So I'll go into a public land area to ground hunt, uh, and there's a lot of movement when ground hunting, uh, slow, you know, spot and stock, still hunting type style hunting. So you may ease on to a, a, a gentleman or a hunter that has did their scouting and they set up on hot sign, whatever the case may be. They, right. they put up a stand, a feeder, things like that. So you may ease on to that setup and, and that 
really makes a lot of people angry, frustrated, and it's understandable. I get it. Yeah, I can imagine. Way. So on the flip side of that, I've done the same thing. I mean, I'm not a ground only type guy, so I'm all about setting up, you know, stands uh, in key locations, you know, pinch point travel routes, betting area, you know, whatever the case is. So I've been on the flip side of that, but on the, at, at the same time, when we talk about public land, your land is my land. My land is your land. Exactly. So it's uh, you know, that's where the the public land. That's why it's comes. public. Exactly. So what? You know, it's a balance. It's a balance. A gray area, a, maybe. A gray, that's better. A gray area. Okay. So that, you know that that's what we really need to talk, talk about. Like, it's not all black and white. Let's talk about the gray because I feel that I personally, when it comes to public land, I operate in the gray area, not the black and white. Okay. So, is that bad adequate? Good question. Right. And, and when you say uh, a stand, right, um, are we talking tree stand? Are we talking a, a pop up? Are we talking uh, you just get out there and uh, blind in or, or do you do it all? So all uh, as far as me or what I walk into most commonly, uh, mostly you like what do you do in, when uh, you go? Well, maybe let me back up. What is the typical public land hunting method? The typical, from from what I see, what I read, what, you know, and, sure. and other folks that I hunt with, I hunt with a lot of people. Right. So typical public land hunting is going to be a either a saddle, a saddle setup. You okay. They carry in a saddle. Right. Or, or a hang-on stand. So they'll, they'll carry in a hang-on stand and some sticks. Um, depending on what state, because every state is different. You know, some states you're allowed to put a, a, a not a permanent stand, but from this month to this month, you can have a stand in there. Uh, in some states, it's a carry-in only. You wow. Know, you carry your stand in, carry it out. So it just kind of depends on the state that you're hunting. Uh, but mostly Texas is a carry-in, carry-out. Um, okay. So it's not typical in Texas for you to get out there and see a lot of blinds uh, set up, like a hard blind or anything like that. And that's a that's a big difference between public land and private land, correct? Well, actually, no. So I kind of got that backwards. Okay. So Texas, Texas says you're going to see a lot of those hard stands, and you're going to see feeders and things like that out there too. Oh wow! Um, but that may be that may be something that you don't see, uh, depending on the area. It could be a really brushed in area. So We're talking you, game cams and all that. All of it. All okay. Of it. Oh yeah, we can talk about games, game cams. Okay. Because public land, there's a there there, public land etiquette. Do not steal people's cameras, <laughs> SD cards, or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I got it, man. I mean, and and that's part of the etiquette, right? That, I mean, that uh, is a huge part of the etiquette. I mean, that, that's some hard earned money. You know, people pay a lot of money for it. It's not cheap, right? Right. I mean, and anybody can just go out there and pull your SD card and go see what's coming out on your property, and then they can go out and you know hunt your stuff. Or not your property, but your the the places you've been you know stalking, you've been working on, you've been setting up, you've been blinding in, and they can just go pull your stuff, go check it out, and come back and take advantage of all the hard work you've been putting in. But really, what's to stop them? That's a good question. That's a good question. Locks, right? But right, you know. A, a lock only keeps honest people out. Agreed, that's agreed. That's all it does. But that happens every day of hunting season, just people, you know, yanking other people's stuff. Not cool. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> when you say uh, public land hunting etiquette, right, do you have an experience or something that you could say like, hey, um, like, what would you do in this situation? Or what, um, what, uh what, how do you how do you justify doing this action or this action? Is is this right? Is this wrong? You know, those are some things that I think we can all learn from because I know that when I get out there, the first thing I do is, you know, I get out to my area. I look around. I want to see people. I want to see people set up. I want to kind of get a, a, a situational awareness. You know, maybe, maybe tell us what's the first thing you should do when you get out on public land. We'll start there. So, you know, just like anything else, honestly, the first thing you should do is, is kind of get out there and, or actually do, do the cyber scouting, right? So if, if you have, if you have a group of experienced hunters, uh, that's to me is one of the biggest issues is people that are experienced, they're going to migrate to a lot of the same areas. So that's where you're going to have a lot of hun hunters congregate to same areas, whether it's it's bedding, it's known feeding areas, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, 
So that's where you end up having a lot of people come to the same area, and then you there, it, it's an area conflict, and that's what I look at when I do cyber scouting. I call it area conflict because that's what it is. So what is cy- what what is cyber scouting like? What, what what would you say that is? Is that using electronics? Is that yeah, using yeah yeah exactly? So you know using Google Earth, Onyx, whatever hunting apps okay. you have, right? So right. using the topographical, you know, using uh, you know looking for. Uh, whatever treetops you're looking for, whatever, you know, bedding areas, transition areas, watering holes, whatever the case may be, right? Right. So if you, ha- if you have a perfect storm, so it, it, it's kind of like making a cake, right? So you, if you got all the ingredients right. for all of this, then if, if, if you're experienced at looking at these maps, you can see if you have all those ingredients, that's going to be, you know, a, a, a high probability of that there's going to be a dense population of whatever animal it is that you're hunting. Right. 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 So it's kind of like making that cake. And if you have experienced hunters, everybody's going to migrate to that area. So on public land, uh, in my experience, it seems like the first person seems that that's their area. And for however many yards it is around it or hundreds of yards in some cases. So, that's where the etiquette comes that, in. And that's like a, a stake to the ownership, I guess you could say, is like, hey, I, I worked here. This is my spot. And, and and what is the expectation? Like, I shouldn't see anybody coming around or, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of like a, a false expectation, is it not? Yeah, it is to me. I mean, that's what it seems like, right? So, Especially know. in a high pressured area or, you know, the, some of these public land hunting. So that that's something we, let me ask you this you know, you've hunted in a lot of different states and, you know, probably accessed a lot of different uh, public access uh, areas, right? Um, Texas is very unique in the public land hunting uh, area, is it not? I mean, as far as like what's available to us as public land hunters and and those of us that, um, you know, try to, you know, map out a place to go to that we know is registered as a public land hunting area. Yeah, so don't hold me to these numbers. Don't hold me to one of you out there are going to correct me. Right, right. So I think Texas is something like 96 point something percent privately. Wow. Owned. So that makes the public land hunter, you know, that, that makes that land hard to access, have access to with without having another hunter in your proximity of, of what is com- comfortable for you, right? So if you're on public land, you're, you're definitely going to run into other hunters. And, and that's where the conflict of the etiquette, what, what is right, what is wrong. And it comes down to personal opinion. Once again, it comes down to uh, hunting, met, hunting styles and methods of how, you know, one person might prefer this over the other. And, and with that, it, it, there's a clash, right? So there's right. a clash there. Right. So, um, have you ever been uh, encroached on, or like you know, been been in a in a in a spot where somebody came into your spot, so to speak? And what do you call a spot? Like this is my hunting spot. Man, that's a good question. So I, I don't even have to think about this one. Let me tell you. All right, man. I, I'm going to have some questions for you on this one too. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so we're going to play. We're going to play. What would you do? Uh oh. <laughs> all right. So this. this yeah. What would you do? Okay. Okay. Let's say that you you had a hunting stand. Uh, we'll say it. We'll say it's a ladder stand, right? An eighteen foot ladder stand that you put up. Um, you know, we'll say a half mile from your house. First off, that wouldn't be here in Texas because I haven't seen an eight foot, eighteen foot tall tree here. I'm just joking, man. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's say that this. Uh, yeah, this piece of public land was not in Texas. Um, but yeah, you had, you know, within, within a half mile, a walking distance, you know, a good walking distance from your house right. that you had a 18 foot ladder stand put in a, a very good, uh, from bedding to water, only water source around for a long way. So you had a, you had a stand between bedding and water that you were hunting. Right. Um, so a high, highly traveled area. Sounds and, like a good spot. Yeah. It's a pretty good spot, right? Right. It sounds like a pretty good spot. Yeah. So you use this spot only on those days that, uh, you know, you get off work, you can get out there, get a quick hunt in and things like that, right? Right. So you get off work, kind of leave work a little bit early so that you can get out there in time. So you skip dinner, you know, you're hungry, you're like, oh, man, I should eat, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about snacks later. But so, <laughs> yeah. so you go ahead and you get out there, and as you're walking up, there's someone in your stand. Oh, hell no. Nah. someone in your stand. But on that stand, you know, hell nah. Someone, in, but on that stand, as per you know, public public um, 
public land stand guidance. You, you, you have your phone number, you have your name, your address, all your contact information. And all there. that is, 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 uh, uh, essentially, uh, required or, or recommended. Yeah. yeah. In, in this instance, it's required. Okay. So your contact information's on there, all on there. Okay. Right. So you get out there and there's somebody sitting in that stand. Not only are they sitting there, they turn around and look at you. And if you're walking up to a stand quietly sneaking around and you walked mm-hmm. around because of the wind and, you know, everything, um, you, you don't want to spook the bed. You don't want to wind bump the bedding sure. and things like this. So as you're coming up, you have a you have a hunter in the stand turn around, give you one of these quiet down, go back, get out of here. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Hell no. Nah. So... I mean, my natural instinct is to be confrontational, you know? Yeah. And uh, I can imagine that if if, if that happened to me, that it, it would end up in some type of confrontation. As much as I would like to say that I'm, uh, you know, mature enough to not get into that. But then I guess that's kind of like harassing a hunter, you know? And that's probably not a good idea if uh, that hunter has a loaded weapon. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in this case, he, well... Yeah, he had a loaded crossbow. It was a crossbow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I so say he did right. So this is a uh, all scenario based, right? Ah, so <laughs> <laughs> so I guess in this scenario that uh, you're both with a loaded weapon, and uh, the confrontation probably wouldn't go as you would expect or you would want. Am I right? <laughs> Dude, well, yeah, probably probably not my favor. Like I said, this dude's got a crossbow up there. I got a compound bow with an arrow not knocked. So I'm probably in the lose, you know. Like So I'm like, okay, what do we do in this scenario? What am I going to do? What yeah, am I going to yeah. do? Well, I say, what am I going to do? It's still scenario-based, right? Well, scenario-based, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right. Right. I guess the cat's out the bag, right? Yeah. True, true story. So, yeah, true this is story. true story. Uh, so everything still plays out the same as I walk up there and I, I catch this guy and he's doing that. And I see the crossbow and I see the hush, hush, like, Hey, back out. And I'm like, bro, you're in my stand. Yeah, right. So like you said, two weapons involved, two, two, two men that, uh, you know, he's in a spot, but I feel like it's my spot. And we go back to that public land etiquette. So yeah. all these things are racing through my mind, you know, like, oh, man, my manhood's in check right now. And I'm like, <laughs> bro, that's my spot. <laughs> oh, man. So I sit back and I just stare at him. I look up for like what felt like two hours, but was probably 30 seconds to admit it. And the first thing that comes to my mind is like, yo, I'm about to rip you out of that tree. That's my spot. Second thing that comes to my mind is no, I can't do that. So it's legal. Everything he's doing is perfectly legal. So the second thing I think is, I hope you get explosive diarrhea for every <laughs> single day of hunting season. Oh, man. I hope you get chorro. You get chorro. <laughs> every day. Every day. Oh, man. So as I sit there and I think about it, I, I'm like, all right, I got two options. Option one, I go back to his truck and I just wait. You know, there, there's only so many places he could park. I have to find his truck. I could wait till his hunt's over. And then we have a conversation afterwards. And I'm like, you know what? I'm hungry. <laughs> so I'm like, man, the wife was, you know, she said she was going to cook dinner before I left. And it'll be ready for me. So I'm like, I'll just walk back to the house and right. eat dinner because I'm hungry. So, you know, you got to look at the opportunities that are ahead of you. And my opportunity happened to be dinner. And uh, it hey, was a good dinner. So. And, and uh I would imagine your dinner probably tasted a little different that day, having to uh, stomach what you just experienced, huh? Yeah, you know, some would say, you know, you got to eat crow sometimes. And uh, <laughs> nice. that day I ate crow, but it was very good. And it, you know, it wasn't actually crow, but but inside I was eating crow that day. But, right. Uh, at, at that point, that was, that was one of those points in all of my hunting time and experiences. Uh, and I've had other, you know, other things like that but somebody somebody sitting in something that i i've spent so much time and effort and things like that in to hush me out of it uh at at that point that that's when i really realized that you know what we're all out here we all have the same goal right we hopefully if you've done your homework you know that you know the legalities and the laws and everything that's behind it so and this guy wasn't doing anything wrong nothing that uh he wasn't legally authorized to do it was it against public etiquette? It's up to question. But for me now, after experiencing it, you know, it's, uh, hey, he beat me to the punch. So that's how, honestly, I, 
I, I feel as a ground guy, you know, I'm on the ground a lot. So if I accidentally walk into someone's uh, stand area setup, whatever you want to call their it, shot or their their, their lane or whatever, yeah, right? I'll, I'll I, I will not sit up in that spot, but I'll easily, you know, w- as quietly as I can move out of that area. But I'm going to keep moving, and I feel bad that I may move into someone else's area, but it's part of the game. It's it's my land, just like it's your land. So. That's something, um, you know, I, I would like to hear that. I would like to hear, you know, from the folks out there watching this, like, what are your thoughts? What are your experiences? What are some things that's happened to you? Uh, and, and staying away from people's area stand setups, lanes, shooting lanes, like, you know, like you said, Ben. So uh, what, what, what are some of those? And is there a real public land etiquette? And other than stealing those cameras and those SD cards, <laughs> that's negated. Don't do it. Yeah. But what are some of those other real things that you guys think? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a good – that's that's a heck of a scenario, man. And that's definitely something that can uh, piss you off and, and you know, but you, you got to handle it a certain way. And, you know, um, it's – a lot of us talk, you know, you live to hunt another day, right? And 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 you got to do that, you know. And we we, it's just um, it's one of those things, and that's what this whole topic of discussion is: is what is proper uh, public land hunting etiquette, you know? And I think in this case, you know, he pr- he he provided us a great example of, you know, I mean, is it wrong? That could be debatable. Is it uh, worth getting into a confrontation again? debatable right we're all men and we can all have a conversation and we can all go to the truck and talk it over you know and 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 this and that and in his scenario he he said um i'm just gonna you know hunt another day and uh were you able to hunt another day yeah i mean (laughs) never seen that guy again you know truth be told had i sat out there and, and i thought about i thought you know like i said i thought about just sitting at his truck and waiting on him right had that conversation and after the fact, after I got home and, you know, filled my grumpy belly with, you know, that good crow I had to eat, I thought to myself, I was like, you know, if, if this guy would have, you know, tagged out, shot an animal, I would have helped. I would have came and helped him drag that animal out, help him fill, dra- whatever the guy wow. needed, I would have been there to do, you know, to help him out. But uh, it, it, it takes it takes that inner conflict that you have with yourself to not have a conflict with the person that, you know, you feel is is doing you wrong because of your personal opinions. Right. Because the fact of the matter is everything's legal. He didn't do nothing wrong. But that's in his eyes. In your eyes is something different. So um it, it all comes down to legality of everything. And that's how it is. Wow. So you know, I mean, so what can you do different, right? As a ground hunter Right. You're just stalking. You're trying to get from point A to point B. You're trying to hit your spots based off of what you've been scouting out and whatever. And you do see a blind. Now, in this case, in that case, it was actually your blind, you know, and that was, uh, you know, something you set up. But what if you what if you you go out there and you see someone else's blind and, and you know, you know, OK, well, uh, chances are there's somebody set up in there. You know, I'm going to go this way or I'm going to do that. But you still got a game plan. You still got to, you know, execute, you know, your uh approach and you know how you're going to get to where you're going to go hunt and all that stuff because uh you know it is sometimes it's tight and you have to you know work around other hunters but you know what can you do different you know what can you do or what have you done let me ask you that so it's kind of a i i do almost the same thing every time because that it happens consistently when you're hunting public land you're going to run into someone's set up stand area blind whatever you want to call it so so at that point, what I, hopefully I got service, and if I don't, um, if, if I do have service, once again, I go back to that topographical map. I'm going to look at why uh, why has this person set this area up? Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's there for a reason. He's there for a reason. So I'm going to look at the surrounding areas, and at that point, it's travel routes, right? So you're going to look at travel routes to and from, um, and so I'm going to start setting up on that. Uh, when when I say set up, I'm going to move through it and see, you know, and take notes as I go and things like that. And when I say I'm on the ground, I'm not moving constantly all the time. I'm going to set up on sign. I'm going to find hot sign. I'll set up on it for a while and I'll keep moving. Depending on time of year, locations, there's so many variables that come into play. So, but yeah, in, in, in that scenario, I'm going to look at 
the surrounding area, so I'll hunt the surrounding areas rather than their area. So once again, is that bad public etiquette? Because you're hunting the travel route to an area that someone set up. But it's it's one of those things that, uh, you know, there's, there's so many people that hunt a stand, and they say, oh, man, somebody shot my deer on public land on the way to my setup. Well, is, is that bad? Because they got their, you know, they, they were hunting a different style and method, so they made it happen, and you, you know, you're, you're angry about it and frustrated, but you've been hunting this deer for two months, or you hunted him all for two full seasons and never got a shot, but this person came in and got it done, but they got a different style and method than you, so is that your deer... Is that it, it, and and so, what about those guys that get out to public land hunting late? I know that's another thing. Is like you get out there a certain time, you've put in the work, you you know you're you're you're, you're executing a plan that you've kind of you know sought out, and then you know this you know weekend warrior like myself, you know he doesn't get a chance to put in the time or the work, and maybe didn't even do the research. He just shows up at first light, and he's just work, walking through, you know, some lanes or whatever. That's another thing, you know. I mean, what what could you say to some new hunters, right, uh, that, you know, some advice to tell them, hey, you know what, I know that's probably how you've been, you know, doing it, but what could they learn from, you know, uh, uh, a seasoned hunter? I guess I could have uh, turned my ringer off. Uh, uh, I, I What could they do from a seasoned hunter that's like, hey, you know what? I, I, I seen you come out here. You get out here at a certain time. But, you know, what advice do you have for them for getting out a little later? You know, or, or, or I'm sorry, earlier. And how does that change the game? You know, because I know that's a huge topic of discussion. You know, I see it a lot on a lot of different forums. You know, man, I was out here set up in my spot. And here comes this guy, you know, with a headlamp on walking through at such and such time and you know it's kind of late in the game for you to be showing up you know i know that would be a great um point or some advice you can share with someone and what do you have to offer for that yeah man every scenario is different right so my life is not your life my right. work schedule is not your work schedule right so you may work nights ah. and and you can't get out there until let's say 8 a.m well i mean a lot of people are some people are climbing out of the stand or the sure. area at that time. Right. Or some people are just getting settled in and, you know, you come walking through and they're like, oh, somebody or driving through and somebody came through my area or whatever. Yeah, I see it so, a lot. So man. that's the thing. Like, be open minded. You know, your life isn't their life. Um, it, and, and me personally, I, I don't even move until gray light unless I can see I don't move. Uh, I, I think that there's so many overlooked areas that people... You know, a lot of folks will they'll say, "I got to be out there an hour before daylight. Get out there, let everything settle, right? And then everything will come back in. You know, after hour, whatever the case may be, right? Everybody's got their own times. Me personally, I normally don't move until uh, you know gray light until I can see because there's so many things that that you miss as you're walking out there with a headlamp or if you're walking through, you know, when it's still pitch black dark, things like that. So, you know, to each their own, that that's the best advice I can give is to each their own. And if somebody doesn't hunt the exact same way you do, doesn't mean it's wrong because none of us are right. None of us are wrong. We all have our own ways. We have our own methods and everybody's got their own experiences. So I'll tell you what, when, if I feel successful doing something may not be successful for you. Right. So, so if you're not doing it the way I'm not doing it, doesn't mean you're wrong and I shouldn't knock you because you're doing your thing, I'm doing my thing, it's your land, it's my land. Yeah, and I think that's a great um, way to speak on public land hunting or just hunting in general. Uh, you have to become your own hunter, man. You know, yeah. you have to become your own angler. You know, you can't just do what the guy next to you is doing and think that you're going to be equally successful. And you may you may be equally successful or you could be equally uh, unsuccessful. And then, you know, but also you hit the nail on the head. You know, we talk about it all the time. You know, there's some things that you do that I've never done. And I'm like, wow, like I would have never done it that way or I would have never thought of that. And it's super successful for you. And it may not ever work for me. So I guess the best thing is just get out there and try something, you know, and learn from that and, you know, get what, what, what builds your, your confidence, what builds your, 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 uh, your, I say confidence and, and, uh, you know, that 
that uh that ability to be maybe to repeat some patterns and do all that you know you talked about hunting on sign and doing all those things you know a lot of people overlook a lot of that and uh you know i just i I love hearing about that in public land because there's added challenges when you're hunting in public land versus you know uh any kind of like you know private you know high fence or anything like that you know it's way different you know and I, i think that's that was why i really wanted to cover this subject was you know me getting out there on public land, I know there's some things that I got to take in consideration that I wouldn't have to take in consideration if I was going out to my primo's ranch and I know where I'm at and I know what's out there and I know what my surroundings are. A lot of this public land, you don't even know where you're at based off of, you know, unless you have that topographical topographical map or, you know, you don't, you, you don't have a, you know, an idea of, you know, what, you know, all that, you know, so I just think it's, it's a, it's a mad respect I have for public land hunters because there's some added challenges, you know, you got to look out for other guys, you got to look out for, you know, um, you know, all those different things and all those different aspects you take into consideration. But when it comes to the etiquette, you know, it's a debatable subject, right? I mean, what's right or wrong, right? There's also potential added benefits, right? Because of assholes like me that are going to be on the ground, right? Right, right. (laughs) So, so, so when Ben gets out to his stand an hour before daylight, you know, which is great. I mean, I'm, I'm not knocking that. Sure. I, I do. If I'm hunting a stand, I'm doing the same thing. But if I'm on ground, I'm not I'm not moving until, you know, gray light. Right. But you, you're going to have the guys like me that, that may give you an opportunity for an added benefit that may be creeping in on your area super slow that those deer are moving through a different direction. And maybe I'm coming through, so I actually send them through right your setup right so there's it, it, you, in you some s- cases you hope for that i know i've been out sometimes right. where i wish something would spook them my way so in the case of that uh in, in this case that may be an advantage you know you're kind of waiting for that and you're looking for that or you're hoping for that so you're absolutely right i could see that being an advantage in an area where there's more hunters versus less so, and, so- and public land is almost here in texas at least there's definitely the um the probability of more hunters in a certain, you know, uh, area than, than less. Am I right? I would say that's a definite probability. Yeah. But there's so much, neg- neg- uh, everything is so negative about that. The oh, hundred percent. Yes. Is, you know, somebody, I, I, I see things all the time where a hunter will say, oh, thanks to some jack wagon, I sure. was able to shoot this deer with him all happy, you know, a picture. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they're saying like, thanks to this jack wagon that came out late yeah. for whatever reason, I was able to tag out and bag this deer. And you're like, man, don't. Don't put the negative spin on it like that. Counted as a blessing, right? Counted as that was it. Wouldn't happen had that person not been there. So sure. why, why are you knocking that person, calling them a jack wagon? Because maybe he just worked a twelve-hour shift at wherever, and he he right. could, he got out there as early as he possibly could. He he's already worked 14, 12, 14 hours, and now he's going to hunt. But you're knocking him because he got out there late, and but thanks to him, you're holding up this deer. You know, so. Right. It, it, there's added benefits, but it's perspective. How do you look at it? Good point. And, and it happens all the time. It it does. And, and, you know, we talk about it a lot, man. I Lately, I've been seeing so much negative uh, uh, conversation and, and almost anger out of all the comments and negativity. You know, even when it's a, a smaller buck and people just, the first knee-jerk reaction is be like, oh, I would have let him grow. You know, and, and it's just like, okay, but what if it's your only hunt of the year and what if, you know, this is putting food in the freezer, man. And and it's like, this guy went out there and, you know, he knew, hey, like, you know, a certain time of day is coming out. I'm probably not going to see another, you know, moving creature today. If I don't take this shot, I'm leaving empty handed. And, you know, that's that's another thing. You know, how do you uh, how do you, you know, balance that out? You know what I mean? And, and I just feel like there's just so much room perspective. Right. Um, sometimes. It's easy to be negative or angry, you know, in, in, in those scenarios when it, it could be like, you know what? Hey, congratulations, man. You you knocked it down. You know, that was a good ethical shot. Hey, congratulations. And some of these some of these guys, it's their first hunt. You know, yeah. everyone starts somewhere. You know what I mean? You you gotta start somewhere. And you know, I sure, you know, you you're trophy hunting and this and that, and you're trying to beat your, you know, your last record size or whatever. This is a good opportunity for you to say, like, 
you know, hey, congratulations or, you know, hey, and, and, and just give them, you know, hey, that respect. You know, I think we, we should owe each other as hunters, you know, more um, respect. And like you said, you know, you could have confronted that guy or whatever, but you chose to be like, hey, if he if he knocked it down, if he knocked down a deer in my spot or what, I was going to help him out. I got my respect for that, man. Yeah, I mean, look, perspective, once again, well, I'm here's the real thing. We, we live in a dig, digital world, right? right. So everybody wants the biggest deer, the longest beard, the, you know, <laughs> the, whatever it is, animal that you're hunting, they want the biggest and the best. So it, it becomes a bragging thing. So we're all wrapped around, like, how much did it score, you know, things like that. So perspective, when it comes down to it, like you said, congratulate the hunter. We're a very, very small community, so we need we need to take care of our own. I mean, uh, the hunting community should be more of a brotherhood rather than we're knocking and bashing each other because, hey, th- this deer, you know, in Texas, it, it was 13 and a half inches. Hey, it was barely outside its ears. Why'd you shoot it? Let him grow. Well, like you said, my life isn't your life, so I might get to hunt two days out, out of the year, and I was lucky to get this deer. So and it's his that, tag, man. I always say that. It's like, it's his tag, you yeah. know, or her tag. You know, it, it's your tag. Do with it what you, you know, handle it like you want to handle it. And I'll be a man about it and congratulate you or just, you know, it, if I ain't got something positive to say, I'm just not going to comment at all, you know? Yeah, let's be positive towards each other. Let's see more of the doe pictures also on social media. Oh, not, good not point, bucks, good right? point. L- let's see those doe pictures. Let's be happy. I mean, when like, I'm hunting for meat, I'm hunting does. That, there you go, right? It's not it, the age old saying, you know, like you can't eat horns, you can't eat antlers. Good you point. Know? So, just be happy with everything, um, and and you know whether whatever method is taken, whether it's rifle, shotgun, traditional crossbow, compound bow, whatever it is, be happy for that person because it did take work, time, and effort, right? So congratulate each other. Don't. Uh, Take the negative spin off of it, and and the scores don't always matter. Like it's it's right. It's it's the experience. Um, oh, hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent guilty. Every hunter's guilty of it. You want it. You want the new world record every right. time you go hunting, right? You want to, but at the same time, sometimes it's about the experience. I, I've shot a lot of uh, you know smaller, but when I say smaller, you know smaller, you know not to trophy bucks, but I shot them because of the experience of what it was and. It, I, I still have that trophy, and it, every time I look at it, I know that that you know what that hunt was. So it brings back that memory of that experience, which may be better than if it was a two hundred inch buck, you know. So right. just that experience is what it's about. It's it's not always the score. Last year I shot a small buck, man, but I was with my primo that we set up, and we we were trying to um, get together and hunt for years, you know. And we finally got together, and we were sitting in the blind together, and he he told me, man, I had I had it in my crosshairs, and we we talked about it. I was like, man, it's a little small, you know. And he's like, look, your hunting season's over, Primo. If you want to take the shot, take the shot, and you fill the freezer. Yeah. So I took the shot. I harvest that animal. I tagged it. You know what I mean? And it was my tag. I did with it what I wanted. I harvested. It was on private land. Um, it wasn't illegal, but it wasn't definitely like you didn't see me posting pictures of it because they would tore me up on freaking <laughs> all the websites and everything. You know what I mean? So I I I definitely uh, I definitely held that to myself but you know what again the memory it was us together i made sure that i had that opportunity and we talked about it man we got up we fist bump and everything and you know it wasn't one of those things you can go out and you know and brag about or whatever but that memory that experience that was priceless man That's, it's priceless it, it can be and it, you know another age old haters are gonna hate man haters That's right. are gonna hate. And there's gonna be folks tell us like oh well he's talking about you know shoot smaller bucks for the experience it's because he can't shoot big bucks right. i've been around big bucks every single day during <laughs> deer season you know 170 plus inch deer that uh, i could take out any day of the year right uh on on what happens to be private land at this time but i don't i i do it for other people to come enjoy right um for me, at this point, it's more about the experience rather than the score. But well to said. Each, to each their own. Right. You know? But all I'm saying is don't knock people that, you know, if, if they don't have the opportunity to shoot, you know, high-scoring deer, whatever the case may be, don't knock them. Positivity. Let's take care of each other. Let's congratulate each other and, and, and keep that person wanting to do what they do because a lot of folks, they'll stop. They'll stop hunting. They'll stop. Right. You can make or break a hunter. Yep. Someone right. coming in new. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So well said. Well said. So check it out, man. Um, 
we can go deep, deep, deep into public land hunting and maybe we will, you know, but um, I want to wrap this up with a, a little segment <laughs> that I want to try called but did you die? Did you die? <laughs> but did you die? All right. It's a segment where our guest shares a memorable cast and blast adventure where they nearly died or found themselves in a sticky situation. Something we can all learn for, learn from. So I bring this up because we all have that no shit there I was story, right? But did you die? Can you think of right now, top of your head, of a situation uh, that uh, you had a near, <laughs> it was sticky, man. Something that someone can learn from. What do you got for us? Yeah, well, you kind of put me on the spot with that <laughs> one. All right, so uh, here's a story from back in the day. We'll say probably around 96 to 98, somewhere. Okay. 1996, 1998, sometime in that time frame. So here we are on a, well, it's called a river, Muddy Boggy River, which is in southeast Oklahoma. Super small, not that big. So me, my dad, and at the time my brother-in-law, we had some trot lines set on this river. Let me put this river into uh, perspective for you. Right. So we'll, we'll say it's 50 feet across. Some would call that a creek, okay. whatever the case may be. So it's nothing but deadfall logs all over. It's sandbars, some are deep, some deep holes, some shallow holes, right? So we put these trot lines out and uh, learning experiences that I don't do anymore. At this time, they were down river rather than up, up river, river. Right. right? Don't ever do that. Um so we put these out. We we come back to check them. We we check them twice a day. We'll check them at noon and midnight. So right. we go back for our midnight run, and uh, we get up the river. We shear a pin, the the prop pin on our outboard, right? So too easy, right? We yeah. bought extra shear pins. Right. We shear that one. We shear the next one. Wow. We're out of shear pins now. So. As we do you're, this, you're three pins further than I would have been. <laughs> yeah, we're already three pins, but but here's the catch: we didn't make it to our trot lines yet. Oh wow! So this is before we even got to our trot lines. At that point, we should have turned around. Guess what? We didn't do. We didn't turn, <laughs> turn around. around. <laughs> so, but you know, in our heads, we're like, no, we're smart because we're going down river. We'll just float down. So it wasn't that far. So we floated down to our trot lines. Lo and behold, as uh, we're checking the trot lines, my brother-in-law took a 10 alt j hook through the finger ah so we did my dad didn't know at the time and we're pulling the boat at that point like we would throw an anchor out pull to it dragging anchor, it yeah dragging it right until we get to shallower water and then we'll get out so my dad is pulling this boat with that hook stuck in my brother-in-law's finger and my brother-in-law's screaming oh but he didn't know and my dad's like <laughs> Oh, we're hung on something. Right? Oh, man. That is just torture, man. Yeah, so it, it, it's about to, like, pull him out of the boat. And he's screaming with this hook through. So, finally, you know, my dad stops pulling, and we have to cut this hook. We can't pull it back out through the barb. So, right. Um, and we, you either got to go through it, and cut the barb off, pull it out, or you just got to – there's there's a couple options there, right? Two options, yeah. Yeah. Pull it back through or cut it. Well, you know, being that uh, – a Leatherman is a multi-tool. We thought it was, you know, that's the best thing. We, we're like, we'll just take a multi-tool. A right. Leatherman, my dad's always got one, right? Right. Um, he, he'll forget his wallet, but not forget his Leatherman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's typical for all of us. So we go to cut this hook out of his finger. The Leatherman breaks. Oh, man. The Leatherman breaks. So at that point, we're like, man, sorry, dude. You got to leave the hook in your finger. We'll cut it off the trot line. So here we are. We got this dude with literally what? this. Yeah, dude. How are you breaking a Leatherman? That's the worst thing. You know, you would think that would never happen. Yeah, you wouldn't think, you, you think you'd be good. Well, one, we didn't plan for this. You don't plan for Oh, it, of course. But at, we do now. Like, oh, yeah. Learning. Yeah, we <laughs> do now. Learning. Right. So break this Leatherman. We just end up cutting the line, and uh, we, we're like, we got to get out of here. But we don't have a motor, and we're going upriver at this point. So we have deep holes, shallow holes. So as we're going through the deep holes, the old anchor, pull the boat up through it, and that's a long process. Get through the shallow holes. And I, at a teenager, my job to jump out and oh, pull yeah. the boat, right? Yeah. So I got my brother-in-law in the back screaming. And my dad, you know, with an ice chest of beer that was full whenever we left, it's empty now. Yeah. You know, like. How like, that happened. Oh, you know, <laughs> they, they, they fell out. Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, he's out there like, pull harder, pull harder, faster. Oh, and I got my brother-in-law screaming. 
So I'm pulling through these log jams, and we're it's it's three people in a 14 foot, you know, a 14 48, 14 foot, 48 the inch wide beam, yeah. John boat, you know. So I'm pulling th- pulling this through there, and we didn't we didn't have like you know 98, 96 somewhere around there. We didn't have bright flashlights, right. the things that we have now, Doug. Yeah, there wasn't so, even there wasn't even LED conversion kits back then. Yeah, dude. And, and if we did, I was poor enough we couldn't afford it, right. you know. Oh, we had a lantern, you know, a kerosene, yeah. kerosene lantern, there pump up go. kerosene lantern. That's what we had. So I'm out there 20 feet in front of the boat, pulling them through this log jams and things like that. So as I go through, I hit I hit one of those drop offs that I didn't just sandbar straight down, right? Uh-oh. So I go down and there's you know there's logs and there's things like that and I'm like dark, completely dark, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna die, you know? I thought <laughs> I thought I was gonna die, man, because the water's moving, it's swift too. Wow. So I'm like kicking to get up and get out of those logs and things like that. So. Did I die? No. Did but I think did I was? you die, dude? I thought I, I, the light was coming in. I was, I said, Jesus, oh, here I come. Oh man, yeah. So man, we all have one of them stories. We all, we all can uh, relate to that thing, man. And that's just one of them things. I wanted to try to see if you had one of them stories. That, but did you die? We all have them. Long story short, didn't die, but uh, thought I was going to. It, it took us about three and a half hours to get back to wasn't even a boat ramp it was a mud slide down the river bank so we made it back got the brother-in-law to the emergency room got it cut out and you know we uh it was daylight before we ever got home right on right on well man it was a pleasure man uh, i think we had a good conversation here public land hunting etiquette is a is an important uh thing to talk about and you know we welcome you guys and your comments man because you know i'm sure there's a lot of things you guys can add to that you might disagree with some of the things he said and that's cool we'd like to hear about that you might agree and and you can add to it you can say hey i've, I've been there i've done that this was my kind of situation or this is how i handle it or if you were in the situation that he presented and and you have uh how would you handle it what would you do we'd like to hear from you man so uh, we're going to sign off, man, and cut this one short or cut this one at, uh, at a cut this one. Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> cut it. We're going to cut it. Yeah. Tap it out. <laughs> All right. So check it out. Um, <clears throat> hey, I just want to thank uh, Jimmy Trent for joining us, man. It was a pleasure, man. And I look forward to having you on for more, more, uh, you know, podcast episodes, man. I think the guys and, and, and the gals that are watching, they're going to enjoy hearing more from you too so you guys stay tuned for the next episode man if you're if you're watching you know or or if you can uh, help us you know share or you know give us a follow if this is the kind of content you like and you want to hear more and you want to see more from us you know you know give us a follow you can find us in anywhere you get your podcast you know we're trying to get it on all these things we're going to be posting these videos to youtube as well so man i hope you enjoyed this you know we're going to be doing this we're going to be trying to post every other week Try to keep that uh, consistency for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the content today. And that's it, man. We're signing out. See you next time. Hey, amigos. If you enjoyed this podcast, I invite you to subscribe so that you can be notified when we post new content. And if you feel like leaving a comment, rating, or review, please do so for this podcast and share with your friends. Thanks for listening, and I hope you had as much fun as we did. Now get out there and enjoy the cast and blast lifestyle, or as as we say here, Poodle Pinchit Cast and Blast.